These boys are good, man. I know the scrimmages. I know it's been cold. These guys are banging. You got all the big dogs are hitting homers in the scrimmages. And, like, to me, that tells me that these guys are locked and loaded. It's a hard playing. The scrimmages, like the, the, the preseason scrimmages, are the hardest things to get up for because it's cold weather. You're just getting back, so you're really not in your – you're finding your groove. And it's not like the fall where it's like, you know, oh, you know, this is like our season and you got a little break. No, you're ready for the season. Like you don't want, you don't want to just hang out and just play these games because the season's two weeks away. It's like you just gotta get there, gotta get there, gotta get there, gotta get there. Finally, you get there and it's like, all right, we're we're here. But the the leading the lead up part is tough because you just you don't really like you want to be there because you know you're you're getting ready, but it's just hard to get up, and it's freezing cold. But these guys are banging. You got Cruz hit homers, Beloso who. Had made has made some swing changes look great. He, I mean, he's not as steep in his swing. He's not he's not falling down. He is like in his legs, used the ground, ripping shit. Homer, Barry, who came in his preseason he's preseason player of the year from most of these um, pundits polls. Yeah, most of the polls that are Analysts. are going out there and saying, hey, this guy's gonna be preseason player of the year. Homer. You have Doty hit a homer the first day. Boys are like are banging now. Obviously, the pitching is gonna is a, is the biggest question. I saw um, our boy uh, um, uh, Fontno pitch. He threw three innings, walked a few guys. Can't do that, but punched out through three innings, punched out five, walked three. Don't want to really want to see the three innings with the three walks, especially if you're trying to start. You don't want to continue to do that. If you're trying to get deep in the game, you got to throw strikes. You can't just – you can't rely on walking guys and punching out the side because you're just not going to be able to go – you're not going to get through five innings, right? But these guys are ready, man. I mean, I've been talking to him. Dylan Cruz is coming in soon, soon. He's going to come in studio, talk about it, talk about it. That guy is good. One we, one. I mean, one, if he – if he show, I mean, he, he shows he can <laughs> – I don't know why that keeps happening. He, he shows cool that – he shows that he can play elite defense, and he he showed he plays perfectly fine defense. I think he's going one one. He's the best college hitter that I've seen since Anthony Rendon. And Anthony Rendon, as a freshman, hit three eighty with twenty at Rice. And Dylan Cruz is—I mean, his approach is awesome. He's a, he has an advanced approach. All he does is try to pepper shit to right center and drives. He hits oppo homers all the time. You try to get in there, he pulls it over the, over the scoreboard, right? He, ha- he understands what he's trying to do at the plate. I mean, you have five All-Americans in a row in that lineup, and they're not even talking about Gavin Duga, who hit 19 home runs last year. So the lineup's going to be deep. It's exciting. I'm going to try to go to some of the scrimmages this week. I'm going to try to go to the first. Ho- if I'm still here, um, I'm going to try to go there. Now, you know, we're going to get into this. Uh, the lockout's not looking very good. It looks like we're going to. Good for this. It's good for this. It's good for me being in studio and for the show, maybe adding another show a week. But it's not good for baseball because it's going to get delayed. But we're not there yet. We're still talking about LSU. I was talking about LSU baseball. Um, Trey Morgan was in here last week, and he was awesome. Awesome. Talking about his approach. Talking about the team. Talking about how excited they are, how good they're going to be. And I think that guys know that, like, hey, on the mound on, like, in particular, I think they know, like, hey, I'm going to go out here. I'm going to have to figure some shit out. I have to, you know, be – if I want to play – and I want to be the guy that my guys can rely on. The offense is going to score me runs. I got to go out there. And I got to compete. Just put us in a position. To I, win. Yeah, I got to go throw strikes. I got to compete. I got to get these guys in a position to where they can win the game late if I need to. And I got to show my staff that I, they can rely on me. And I think guys are going to do that. They're going to step up. One one guy I think that's standing out is uh, Blake Money. Blake Money's been he he lost some weight. Yep, and, and he, he had and he had he had a good year last year. You know, he he's kind of tailed off towards the end of the year, but. Right, he lost some weight. Endurance is gonna be he's gonna be better. His endurance is gonna last. He's gonna be he's still throwing hard hat and lost velocity. When sometimes when you lose a lot of weight, CC Sabathia did it in the big leagues. CC is a oh, big was, dude, yeah, he was bro. Smashing like eight bowls of cereal a day. Big dude, like he was three hundred some pounds. He was throwing Shoving. throwing cheese, right? One of the better pitchers in the game. Lost all the weight, got real lean, 
stop throwing hard. Started getting hit. I said, fuck it. I'm getting fat again. <laughs> Dude, what a <laughs> fuck life. It. I'm getting fat again. I'm throwing. <laughs> I'm going to get fat. I'm going to throw hard. I'm going to get guys started shoving again. Now you look at him. Have you seen him lately? Go look at CC Sabathia. He is. Cut up? Absolutely. He is shredded. Like, Are we he, talking uh, Joe Thomas level shredded? The offensive lineman for the, yeah, the Browns? Yeah, look at him. He is like. Yeah, yeah he's shredded. He, you look at him, you're he, like, this is not shredded. the same guy. Like, he is like. Absolutely. Oh my God. Yeah. Yoked. He's Show right. that. Put it up on the screen. <laughs> Got to. I mean, this guy is yoked. He's in men's health. Bro, he is like, I don't know what he's doing. I don't know if he's on some PEDs or what. Has but to be. He is like, this isn't the same guy. This guy looks like a football player now. I mean, he doesn't look like he pitched. He's a football player. How old is he? Really? I mean, he's probably upper 30s, I would assume. 41. Oh my God. 41. 41. Look at, look at this man. Man at 41. CC is yoked, bro. Can't yoked. throw, though. Got to be fat to throw. I mean, but he's, he don't want to throw now. Is there yeah. a better deal than that, good. though? If like, sorry, dude, I have to put on weight or else I won't be good at baseball. It's like Babe yeah. Ruth. Is yeah. that well, the, the, the thing on baseball, the, <laughs> the baseball comment is, you know, oh, all these guys that are shredded and they look good and they're in shape, they always pull their muscles. You can't pull fat. Can't pull fat. That's what they say. As the pitchers say, they can't pull fat. Well, I don't, it doesn't look good. I don't know if it looks good. But if you're, if you're going to throw 100 and you're fat and you can make it through the season, go for it. Go for it. I mean, I'm not think John Daly said. That's, his, that's, what, that's how he lives his credo. But you talked can't about – You can't pull fat. You talked about um, like how the boys were a little juiced up for like, essentially winter baseball. Yep. Like, you know, if you're – I kind of in the grind of it all, then you like start playing, and it's like, man, I don't really want to be out here, but we have to be out here. How much does that change whenever you get like a new coach in the building? We're like, bro, I have to feel like I have to prove myself all over again. So it gives them a little bit of like the extra oomph, right? Like it takes away from, especially in the fall, it takes away that from that like complacency of, oh, we're in the fall, all I gotta do is get my work in. You know, the staff knows what I'm going to do. I got kind of have my spot solidified on the roster, my starting lineup, whatever, whatever. Well, now you have a new staff, you have a new coach. You have to go out there and you have to work your ass off to prove to that coach that you are that guy. You are the starter. You are a guy they can rely on. They have, you know, there's probably three or four guys in the lineup normally that you just know, okay? No, every staff, every new – it doesn't matter who the coach is. They come in, okay, this guy – is a guy, Dylan Cruz. This guy's a guy. He's not leaving. K. Doty. This guy's a guy. He's not leaving the lineup. Most of these guys, those three, four, Trey Morgan. That's a guy not leaving the lineup. Gavin Dugod not leaving the lineup, right? But then you have other guys that okay, I didn't have my greatest year the year before. I had some moments, but they weren't there for the moments. They're looking at the whole picture. I got to go there. I got bust mass. So it takes away a little bit of that complacency. You know, now you get to the spring season before the year starts, and you don't have. Um, it's, the newness is kind of gone. Like everybody's kind of familiar with everyone, and so now you just like get me to the season so I can show these guys what I can do with the lights on. But yeah, it takes away from the monotony and the complacency of the fall. I, th I think, in particular, and it gives you a little bit of motive, extra motivation to go. And then from what everybody's saying about Jay and everything that I've talked to him about is you know, he loves baseball and he's like he's a in the he's in in the middle of everything, right? So he understands what the guys are doing. He understands he's hitting the, the, the he's a, their hitting guy basically. He's like basically the hitting coach, not the hitting coach, but his philosophy. He's like a uh, he's like an offensive coordinator that also calls like a head coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, 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 right. So like he's he understands it and like he loves it. He didn't want to move away from it. He wants to live close to the field so he can see the lights. He promotes guys getting there whenever they want to work there. Like he's he's the guy that I think is is a good is a great fit for the program, and the guys seem to love him. You know, and like, you're going to see a lot of what his fitting philosophy is in Cade Beloso, I think. Cade, you're going to look at his stance and his swing and his approach this year compared to what it was last year, and it's going to be completely different. And he looks like he just looks better. Right? He leaned up a little bit. He's just, just you can just tell by his approach at the play, like, man, this guy he's he's comfortable. Comfortable. is going, yeah, yeah, yeah. this guy's going to have a pretty good year. He's I mean, going to be back to like the freshman year. He had a great year. He has you know? a nice swing. Like he, he's a he's a good. You could tell he's. Well, a he, good he has hitter. a good. He has a good feel for the strike zone too. Right. Like he doesn't chase a lot. He walks. He battles some stuff off. And then you know, I think he just got in some bad habits last year. And it's hard mid season to fix that. You know, you're trying to, especially after you've slimmed up and did all the things. That yeah, you and you're trying. Right. And yeah. you're trying to compete, and it's like, man, I don't want to go through that stretch of like struggle when I'm not don't feel as comfortable doing these things. I'm gonna go with what I feel comfortable with. And I'm just gonna. 
abandon it. I'm just gonna, yeah, I'm just gonna figure it out, and it's just hard to do that. Then he, this offseason, he goes and whole new approach, new eyeballs. Sometimes the change of scenery is good, so new eyeballs came in there. See him, hey, this, let's try this. Loved it, worked his ass off to do it, and he looks good. And I think it's gonna be, he's gonna be a big. Where do you put him? Um, I mean, he's probably gonna be the DH. I would assume. You know, DH. Because well, Barry can't. Barry, that was the knock on Barry coming in. Yeah, I don't know. I've never. I haven't seen. I haven't seen. Uh, I thought he's been playing third base in the scrimmages, though. Right. I, I feel like sure. they're going to put him at third, but like they wanted when they brought him in the original. Like there was a lot of talk of him being a DH because of Jacob Barry got two left hands. Yeah. So, Mikey, I'll ask you this: What would be your lineup with this? Ooh, that's tough. Um, I mean, you're talking about actual order, or like just the nine guys I want in the lineup. Give me your actual order. Or you could give me a nine guys you want on the field. Like. Um, that's tough. So the catching position for me is like, um, who's the transfer they got? McManus. McManus. So he's behind the dish. He's not leading off. Dylan Cruz going to lead off. I'm going to put, honestly, I would like Trey Morgan to lead, lead off. off. He's a, he's a, he's a true lead off. And I want Dylan Cruz number two, Jacob Berry three. I would put um, Doty four. I would put... If you can do this without looking, that'd be incredible. Um, I put Doty four. I would put Duga five. I would put. I'm missing someone. You got out there. I'm missing someone else. Thompson, Jordan. No, 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 no. Hold on. Who's all? Who are the five All Americans? Uh, Doty, Cruz, Barry, Morgan. There's one more. There's one more. Doty, Cruz, Doty, Cruz. Trey. Trey Morgan. Jacob Berry. Jacob Berry. Jacob Berry. Yeah, there's four. Duga? Is he an All-American? Okay, so let's say Duga. So those are five. So I would go Morgan, Dylan Cruz, Jacob Berry, K. Doty, Duga. Those five. Then after then after five, I would go six, I would go McManus. Seven, I would go Thompson. Eight, I would go to Giacomo if he's going to be in center. I don't know what the outfield situation is going to be right now. And then nine... Um, well, Beloso in there. I've missed Beloso. I'd, put, I'd probably switch put the catcher and Beloso. Yeah, switch the ca- switch McManus and and uh, Beloso. That's a deep lineup. That's deep. It's deep. I'm impressed. I did that without looking at the other uh, roster. Yeah, got lost. Um, I got it. lost a little bit. We came back. I think McManus was a might have been an All American like at his previous. He is. He's getting Sanford. some pub. I was looking at some articles. He's he's good. Yeah. You know, but well, he's another he's another uh, Jay Johnson like stereotypical guy that can just rake and then he'll worry about defense later. Yeah, but I think he's okay. I think no, he's, he's okay behind the plate. Player. Like, he's yeah, I think he's I think he's okay catcher. behind the dish for sure. But I mean that that those nine that's a stacked lineup. Uh, you're not going to get a much better lineups than that across the country. I think it's probably the best lineup in the country. Um, so that would be my nine. You, know, you want the thought of it is you want your top hitters at the top two spots. You get to hit more because you hit them more. Like I know uh, Barry's the guy, and like you want him, but like I mean Morgan, you want you also want him to be able to drive some guys in, and so you want to be able to have Trey Morgan, who's going to get on base. He walks. He has a great eye. He has great play discipline. You have Dylan Cruz, who's going to be able to drive him in with a double or homers, and then you're just going to just just going to. The Toronto Blue Jays kind of showed you last year that you can't have too many. Like, there's going to be RBIs for everybody in the lineup, right? The everybody I think hits everybody scores. Yeah, like the Blue Jays probably had. I think they had four or five guys that had 100 RBIs last year, in one lineup. And so everybody's like, "Well, fuck." I mean, if you hit the ball. If you have three guys with 100 RBIs in a row, like, who are they driving in? Well, the lineup's deep enough to where there's going to be enough. You know, they're not going to drive them in every time. You know, they're not going to hit a three-run home run every single time this guy's up. So the guy behind you is going to have some opportunity. So, it's a, and, you know, you have to have guys that, that, that are able to do that. You know, Maneri used to always talk about hitting in the clutch. I, I don't believe that hitting in the clutch, like, most more, people have – if you're in the middle of the lineup, you're going to have more opportunities with guys in scoring positions, so you're going to have more RBIs. Just, outs. just in the same, you know. But there are dude, there are guys that have, like DJ LeMahieu when I played here has a clutch gene. I mean, he was the whole reason why I had the opportunity to hit the base hit in the tenth inning, in the tenth inning of, in, against Texas. Two out, two strike, double down the left field line, scored two runs, and that I mean that saved the World Series for us. It saved the game. He had a walk off uh, base hit against Auburn earlier in the year. You have guys that are just have a knack. Blake Dean had a knack for getting the big hit. They just have a knack for doing it. But you know, to say that oh, this guy drives in, this guy drives in 100 RBIs a year. 
he's hitting the three four hole like he's just gonna have more opportunity doesn't mean he's necessarily the clutchest guy ever he's just like the guy that's leading off is not gonna have as many opportunities to drive as many guys in as the guy in three hole as well you gotta set the table Right, you have a guy that needs to get on, and your seven, eight, nine guys have to be able to get on for them to got, have RBIs. And Cruz and Trey can both run. That's the other thing, is you're able to put you. Do you put them on if they get us? They walk. They're in scoring position. Jacob Barry hits a double. They're scoring from first base. You know what I mean? Or they steal second. So like that's the you want to have guys that can create havoc on the bases, and that's what we have those guys that can, and that helps run production. That helps whenever some, whenever you face an ace on the bump. You know, a guy's throwing 95, 96, 97. Nobody can get hits off of him. Battle, battle, battle. Get on first. Okay, now you got to throw the stretch. And now, okay, I'm going I'm to sneak this stolen base. Now I'm on second base. Now I'm in scoring position. Nasty slider. Catcher catches it. Base runner gets to third base. Now you're on third base with less than two outs with a lot of pressure on the catcher and the pitcher. Now I can't, I can't spike that curveball or the slider anymore because now the guy's going to get in. Next guy, route, ground Me. out, base uh, run scored. That's how you able to get score runs without having to be able to drive guys in all the time. And so to me, that sometimes is more important than the guy that just wants to just hit the homers and doubles. If you have a guy that can have productive outs and can battle, and that's what Trey Morgan mentioned. He was like, you know, one of his philosophies is like, we're not going to strike out. We're going to make it hell on the pitcher. We're going to fight pitches off. That's all goes into it is being able to say, hey, you know what, this guy is, this guy worked a walk, got to second. Now he's at third base with less than two outs. All I gotta do is put the ball in play, and I'm gonna score him. And I think that's gonna—I think that's gonna be the biggest difference you see from this lineup and last line, last year's lineup.